Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, uh, so far we have uh, in this course we have discussed uh, many things like uh, we have discussed uh, uh, chemical equilibrium, uh, we have discussed uh, chemical kinetics, different kind of theories of uh, to obtain the reaction rates, the reaction rate constants uh, actually as such and uh, we have discussed the oxidation mechanism of practical fuels uh, as the uh, mechanisms by which pollutants are being formed. Uh, then we have discussed different kinds of flames, we have discussed laminar non premix flames, we have discussed uh, droplet combustion, we have discussed laminar premix flames, thermodynamics, premix flame structure, we have premix flame speed and then um, gone on to discuss the different chemical structure of premix flames. Uh, but of course, as you know that these are all uh, the last thi things the, the flames that we have discussed those are like steady state flames. So, those tells you about the propagation characteristics, those tells you about the stabilization characteristics about the temperature, but they do not tell you how to get them that is how to ignite them or how to extinguish them or what can causes extinction. So, for a practical engine of course, you cannot start with a flame of course, when you have a engine when you start the engine you have to ignite it somehow. And uh, you have to understand once again we will go to the actual ignition problem in an engine later, but for now we have to first understand that what are the basic principles which can lead to ignition which we call thermal explosion uh, that is uh, uh, there is no of course explosion involved here. It is just a uh, rapid rise of uh, rapid uh, it is of course uh, uh, this rapid rise of temperature and uh, that is taking place and we use this thermal explosion we will go to the ISCA of concept uh, we will go to extinction flammability limit and uh, flammability limits and uh, the concepts of flammability and flame stabilization. We will mainly not uh, mainly go into this this topics here um, uh, extinction and uh, flammability we will just discuss and uh, flame stabilization we will take up later. So, uh, what is what do you mean by ex, uh, uh, by explosion? We, by explosion, we mean a thermal runaway. Of course, as I said, there is no actual explosion involved. It's just a thermal runaway where the temperature can rise quickly in a given mixture because of the combustion reactions, and uh, it's essentially caused by a feedback loop involving nonlinear Arrhenius re heat generation and linear heat loss. So, what I mean by this, this is that so after you ignite, if there if there is this some uh, it uh, the temperature slowly increases. Now, as the temperature increases, this heat is conducted and uh, to the surrounding regions uh, or, or not conducted as the local temperature increases the local rate of reaction increases. So, once the local rate of reaction increases the temperature further increases and this further increased temperature actually again increases the, 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 the reaction rate. No, but at the same time as the temperature increases the heat loss also increases because the temperature difference with the surrounding also increases. So, the heat loss increases. So, uh, the on one hand you have this uh, highly nonlinear Arrhenius heat generation uh, and on the other hand you have a linear heat loss. So, it is the balance of this that that tells us whether in a given state of mixture we would have be able to have an ignition at all possible which can be obtained by thermal runaway. Then there is a radical runaway. So, there is a radical if the radicals are produced at a fast rate through the chain branching reactions then also you can have uh, this different um, uh, then also you can have um, uh, this uh, uh, then also you can have this uh, 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 this uh, radical runaway and it can lead to ignition ok. And uh, we will first do uh, also an uh, unsteady ignition analysis that is track we will track the temporal evolution of a reacting mixture upon application of an ignition stimulus uh, that is what it uh, how does the ignition actually happen take place how much does the fuel concentration change in that amount of time etcetera. And uh, on what parameters does an ignition uh, delay time uh, would depend on theoretically. So, we will consider a theoretical analysis and then we will do a steady analysis using this S curve analysis and we will identify the states at which the steady solution does not exist or it will exist for a non reacting situation we would uh, consider a ignition state and we will consider a, um, a strongly burning state which will signal extinction. So, we will do the S curve analysis just like that Z curve analysis this is an S curve analysis and will tell us under what conditions you can have ignition under what conditions you cannot have ignition like that.
ok. So, um, ultimately uh, this this is caused by the system adiabaticity where that is whether if you do not have heat loss then even if you supply a small amount of uh, uh, energy it will automatically the ignition is guaranteed. But then we do not deal with such uh, ideal adiabatic systems we always deal with systems which are exposed to the surroundings which are exposed to um, uh, which are exposed to the surroundings. For example, in a, in a gas turbine engine you have uh, like um, like a nozzle ok. So, the nozzle gives out a spray and uh, the spray atomizes uh, the if the spray breaks up uh, then the spray break up uh, 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 basically leads to droplets and these droplets can break up further to create small and small droplets ok. And these droplets then essentially mix uh, essentially evaporate and form a gas cloud and mix, mix with the local air and then you have an uh, igniter somewhere like a spark which actually ignites. So, uh, now then a small kernel is formed ok, a small ignition kernel is formed with a, a higher temperature, but then there is also continuous heat loss to the surrounding cold air ok, the cold area rather uh, not very cold uh, because in a gas turbine the compressor the downstream temperature is uh, quite hot itself, but it is a cold area. So, uh, it is not an adiabatic this kernel that is formed is not an adiabatic system. So, uh, basically if you want to understand fundamentally ok that what governs whether this kernel will be able to sustain and ignite or not forget about all the flow non uniformities etcetera at least from a fundamental point of view at least from a very simple analysis uh, like a, a heat generation heat and loss point of view uh, without considering the flow non uniformities etcetera. If you just want to understand that then uh, what are the considerations what governs whether in an idealized state if you form a kernel or not what whether it will ignite or not. So, that is very important to design your ignition system ok and uh, uh, that is uh, very critical because if you do not have ignition you do not have uh, essentially power. So, Mm, to to have that we need to understand this concept of ignition and extinction. There can be other limit phenomena like uh, flammability limits that is uh, given mixture temperature and pressure uh, what are the leanest and richest concentrations beyond which flame propagation is absolutely not possible ok and these set the boundaries uh, ulti ultimate boundaries for extinction. And then blow off and flashback is uh, essentially a lack of aerodynamic balance between flame speed and flow speed, but this, uh, there is also some extinction and heat loss phenomena can be involved as we will show that uh, later in a um, you know when we consider the flame stabilization mechanisms and afterburners and scramjets ok. So, that will come later. So, in more practical applications and we will not consider a blow off flashback here. So, first is that uh, we will consider the simple consideration of quenching distance and uh, minimum ignition energy ok. Uh, so, what is concept of quenching distance you see um, if you suppose have two adiabatic parallel plates ok. So, uh, or, or not just two metal plates uh, which are separated by a small distance. Now, you can easily think that if you have to sustain and say this uh, plate is filled with the inside of this plate is filled with fuel or mixture. Now, if you ignite it it is very easy to understand and easy to intuitive that if this plates are not separated by a substantial distance this flame will immediately extinguish ok. This is essentially the principle then it will extinguish by the conduction and heat loss ok and this is um, uh, this comes from the concept of this minor safety lamp or the Davis safety lamp where uh, you basically this mesh is uh, uh, made so uh, fine. So, that uh, even if uh, there is a surrounding uh, uh, fuel air mixture the flame inside the lamp really does not cannot uh, get out and ignite the whole mixture ok. Because once it tries to get out it just gets quenched to the fine uh, over distance between these two meshes between these wires. Mm, so, that is the concept of the minor safety lamp and that is the concept of the quenching distance that uh, for a flame to be for a premix flame to be not quenched ok. Uh, to be not quenched while passing through two uh, say parallel plates the distance between them uh, should be greater than the quenching distance. And then what should the quenching distance depend on? It is very easy to appreciate understand that the quenching distance should depend on the flame thickness mm, because flame thickness is the region over which conduction process is dominant ok. So, that is why the dq is essentially proportional to the LD0 which is the planar laminar flame thickness ok. So, now uh, uh, then uh, we can by the same token we can think that uh, that uh, um, the minimum ignition energy by a uh, minimum ignition energy by a spark ok that is um, uh, should be essentially have some bearing on this this kind of a relationship that is the minimum ignition energy by a spark should be that energy by which I should be able to take the temperature of a given mass of gas and what should that mass of gas be of course, this is the rho u is the unburned density and the volume of gas should be essentially proportional to the volume of the 
uh, the cubic volume of the quenching distance. Okay, so that is why it is LD cube. Mm, okay, so that it should be at least uh, uh, in a in a given volume, which is the um, which is uh, the characteristic length scale of the which is the quenching distance, and hence the the flame thickness. Um, over that volume, I should be with the spark energy. I should be able to increase the temperature from Tu to T adiabatic. Okay, so that is the criteria, and of course that gives me the fact that. Uh, Mm, then it becomes proportional to the quenching distance and from here it is dependent on pressure and I can using this I can show that this pressure then uh, then E mean essentially depends on pressure and of course with a mm, for n greater than or equal to uh, 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 half um, or or, uh, 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 mm, or or two thirds you will get a uh, uh, ignition energy decreasing with uh, mm, uh, in ignition energy essentially uh, decreasing with uh, pressure. Okay, so this is the point, and uh, here of course uh, you see that this quenching distance, if we plot, and on the y-axis axis and the minimum spark energy or ignition energy on y-axis, you still get a law which is essentially proportional, nearly close to this three behavior, and which says that this uh, mm, this relationship is uh, correct in the ballpark. Okay. Now, uh, let us consider this in more details that is suppose we are igniting a gas uh, by putting an amount of um, uh, by, by uh, with the temperature of which is uh, increasing and uh, due to heat release. So, we have a uh, 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 so this is the, the situation that we have a con con uh, we have a um, we have a uh, 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 we have this condition of this adiabatic thermal ignition and uh, where we are considering the governing equations for constant volume ignition. So, for, for per unit uh, for a per unit volume um, the temperature rise uh, in, a, in a given uh, uh, in a given volume uh, uh, will be uh, in which we are not considering any transport. So, uh, homogeneously in the given volume if we supply some energy then the temp because of heat release the temperature will rise and the temperature rise is essentially given by um, this this uh, left hand side rho cv dt dt that is this uh, rate of change of temperature with respect to time so this is a temporal uh, this is a, this is a time varying uh, transient term and how much will the temperature rise that is the right hand side of your energy equation which is essentially the heat release times the mass fraction uh, the rate of consumption of this uh, uh, rate of change of uh, concentration of the fuel. Okay. Um, I mean of course, this is to the leading uh, order uh, when you have this uh, fuel in uh, lean quantity with respect to the oxidizer this is the same consideration we had it for the premix flame. So, and then this dcf dt we can write is to be given by this. Uh, so, essentially this rate of change of temperature uh, rate of change of temperature is essentially equal to the rate of release of uh, heat. Uh, so, it is essentially equal to the rate of heat release equal to the heat release rate whereas, this is V this is the QC and this is Cf which is a concentration and this is R in this term. Okay. And uh, this is the heat of combustion. And so, we can normalize this of course, uh, by the same manner that is T tilde is equal to like uh, C V T by Q C uh, Y U um, and then uh, C F by um, C F tilde is equal to C F by say C F uh, 0, where C F 0 is the initial concentration. Okay. Um, initial concentration of the fuel and then of course, you will get a relationship like this alright and then um, uh, we can sum these two things and create a coupling function ok then uh, this take this on the right hand side and then the dt tilde plus cf tilde equal to 0 and then we can write of course, that uh, at uh, t equal to t 0 at time t at uh, time t equal to 0 your temperature is at the T 0 that is the initial temperature. Okay. So, we are trying to find out basically that if you keep a given volume of a gas at a temperature T 0, how much time will it take for it to ignite. Okay. So, um, then of course, at a uh, uh, time uh, at a uh, whereas at time T equal to at a later time uh, this uh, this uh, yeah, at, uh, so D T if we have this equation D T T T is equal to T. Um, equal to 0 then T tilde plus C f tilde is equal to T 0 tilde plus 1 why 1 because at C f 0 at, at T time T equal to 0 your C f tilde is equal to C f 0 by C f 0 which is equal to 1. Mm, okay. So, whereas this can be anything so, but the final temperature cannot exceed the adiabatic flame temperature. So, at time t equal to infinity we have time t add this becomes equal to 0 is equal to t 0 tilde plus 1. 
So, we can replace this 1 plus t 0 tilde here itself with t add and then this becomes t tilde is equal to t add tilde minus c f tilde all right. So, uh, this is the thing. So, uh, then uh, uh, then uh, 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 this is uh, uh, then this becomes d t tilde d t is equal to uh, b uh, times 1 plus uh, t 0 tilde minus t tilde and we can essentially what we are doing is that we are essentially substituting here mm -hmm. this guy with uh, with the c f tilde is equal to t at tilde minus t tilde. Okay. So, once we do that this d t tilde d t is equal to um, we can write this in this form. So, once again explicitly what we have done previously also with the premix flames um, uh, when we get our uh, when we get this an energy equation the energy equation is always mixed with the temperature term as well as the species uh, concentration term. So, what you can do is that you can uh, by using this coupling functions you can write the species concentration term in term of the temperature term in terms of temperature and then you can replace this uh, species concentration um, uh, in this uh, uh, in this energy equation using that coupling function and then you can write it explicitly in the form of temperature ok. So, that is what you get. So, now we can introduce a small perturbation analysis where we say that that uh, this uh, t tilde at that is at uh, that is at any time uh, that is at after at any time t greater than 0 your uh, t tilde is essentially equal to the T 0 that is the original temperature T 0 tilde plus epsilon times theta T uh, which is a function of time plus an order or plus higher order terms which are proportional to epsilon square and this epsilon is a quantity much greater than 1. So, we do not need to consider this ok. So, this goes to 0. Uh, so, this is essentially small and so essentially we write it as a linear uh, perturbation and that is T tilde is equal to T 0 plus epsilon theta T whereas theta T is of the order of 1 and epsilon is much greater than 1 and so we this is the this is the equation with which we are going to substitute. So, of course and we can find out that uh, the we can write this epsilon is equal to T 0 tilde square by T A tilde and that actually this if you see that when this is if this was T B essentially becomes essentially the um, 1 by Zeldovich number. So, this is very small and even uh, Zeldovich number itself is uh, if you remember Zeldovich number itself is uh, um, or let us write 1 by Zeldovich number itself is essentially your uh, T B 0 tilde square divided by T A tilde. Okay, and this is of course still much smaller than one. So definitely, this quantity, if this T B zero square is by T A tilde, uh, is much smaller than one. Then of course, uh, and of course, this is actually T B tilde minus T A tilde, which does not come in, uh, which we are not showing because that is a of the order of one. So if this is, is much smaller than one, then definitely this is also much smaller than one because a T O is a T O uh, tilde square is definitely much smaller than um, T B O uh, tilde squared. Okay. So, and then uh, to retain this uh, nonlinearity, and uh, this is of the order of 1 uh, to retain the nonlinearity when we substitute this and then when we substitute this we get essentially what we will get is that we, we get a uh, sim much simplified thing whereas d theta dt tilde is essentially is equal to epsilon uh, is given by e to the power of theta and then we can plot theta with respect to t tilde and you will get this uh, this exponential behavior. Okay, whereas you remember theta is nothing but this quantity. Okay, you can do this uh, uh, thing uh, analysis and you will find. So the T ignition is uh, this uh, T is essentially nothing but T divided by T i. Okay, whereas T i we can solve uh, that we can uh, to estimate this now we can find out the time when it becomes. Uh, when theta becomes uh, we can essentially find out. So, this is uh, what the solution is theta is essentially uh, minus logarithm of uh, 1 minus t tilde. So, and that this gives this uh, this behavior actually uh, all right. So, uh, now um, this we see we can say that uh, that when t becomes t tilde becomes equal to 1 then theta becomes infinity ok. So, where then t tilde becomes equal to 1 uh, that is t equal to t i. Uh, then what is T i and we can solve this and, and then write this in a non dimensional form and we can find that T i is nothing but this quantity ok. Whereas T i is equal to C v T 0 square by T a T 0 is the initial temperature and if I break Q C y f 0 b times e to the power of minus T a by T 0 ok. You see that now this strong uh, the temperature dependence comes from uh, this two things that is it has this one and it has this exponential this arrhenius term. So, of course, uh, you can understand that if C v is large your T i will be large 
mm, that is it takes more time to heat up the gas. If your QC is large, your heat release is large, um, uh, then of course, TI will be less. If your YF0 is large, your TI will be less. And of course, if your exponential, this ordinance time is term is large, your TI will be less. So, these are the factors to the first order we can estimate by this analysis that which controls the ignition delay time of a homogeneous mixture in a given volume. Okay. Mm, uh, but of course, you see here we have not considered any heat loss. So, we can we are considering an adiabatic uh, uh, thermal ignition basically. So, uh, the, the problem once again to reiterate was that we considered a volume which was kept at a temperature T0 and we estimated here the time that is required for it to ignite that is for which uh, this uh, theta becomes essentially infinity and which guarantees ignition. Okay. So, this is uh, the interesting thing. So, one more interesting thing that to, to look at is that um, that um, it can be uh, also shown that the time uh, by uh, during this uh, time that the uh, your um, yeah so that's uh, that's that's um, it for uh, uh, here and yes yeah, so what we can do here is that uh, if we just take this thing and uh, write this equation that is uh, t tilde that is t tilde is equal to t zero plus epsilon theta that is so if we substitute this thing here and uh, this is the interesting thing to show is that that is uh, this then we write the t tilde plus epsilon theta plus c f tilde is equal to t 0 tilde plus 1. Okay. So, c f tilde is equal to 1 minus epsilon theta. Okay. So, of course, now um, when uh, uh, I mean uh, this because this epsilon is very small, uh, we can say that this uh, C f uh, this is uh, of the essentially of the order of 1. So, C f tilde is essentially equal to 1 for most part of the time. So, it means that during ignition uh, even when the temperature rise is substantial as long as this is uh, this quantity is small your consumption your fuel consumption is very less. Okay. So, uh, C f tilde remains up to 1 as or up to very long terms of the ex uh, uh, up to up to essentially up to your um, extinction. So, that is the point and um, uh, we uh, wanted to show and that is a, a fact is uh, comes from the fact that it has this this kind of a behavior. So, then uh, of course, uh, this gave us a time of uh, ignition of a um, uh, volume of a given volume of fuel air mixture when then there is uh, no uh, heat loss. But of course, in a practical scenario there are heat loss and um, in that case ignition is not guaranteed. In the previous case ignition was guaranteed because you just keep at uh, the you just keep uh, take a take a uh, volume and uh, make it uh, um, uh, put it in a basically a chamber without heat loss and you put that uh, you put an initial temperature of T0 then of course, uh, there is no way other than for this that uh, uh, for that mixture to ignite. Okay. So, uh, as a result of that the, the ignition uh, carried on uh, whereas, um, uh, if you have a heat loss then the ignition is not guaranteed and um, then we again go to this analysis of like uh, for that same volume, but here the heat loss takes place to the surface whereas, the heating up of this mixture and this heat release takes place to the volume. So, you have on the left hand side this is your transient term, this is the temperature rise term to volume uh, for a given mass, this is once again volume whereas, this is the surface area and this is the heat loss. Okay. So, this can immediately be by going by the previous analysis this can be immediately cast into that form d theta d t tilde is equal to e t theta minus h tilde theta okay. and uh, this now uh, will give you this uh, uh, different things. So, uh, we can plot these things individually this is the heat generation term essentially this corresponds to this term and this will correspond to Mm, and this will essentially corresponds to uh, this term. So, we can plot these two terms and uh, the sum on the, uh, the sum of these two terms h e, th e, th e to the power of theta e theta minus uh, and uh, plus of minus of h tilde theta uh, is essentially equal to the uh, the heat loss. So, this is the heat generation curve, uh, this is the e, e theta curve and uh, now let us have different possible rates of heat loss. So, uh, you see. So, this is uh, uh, this case uh, let us go from the case th uh, 2 where uh, definitely your uh, heat loss uh, this slope is given by h this uh, this heat loss is much much weaker than the heat generation this is the curve which is much larger. So, as a result of that this uh, ignition is guaranteed no problem. So, for case 2 the ignition is guaranteed mm, whereas, for case 1 is interesting it has you see this h this uh, this line that is the h tilde theta line intersects with the e theta line at 2 points 
S and U. What are these things? This is a stable point and this is a non-stable point. Why? Because you see at this point, this is theta that is increasing, this is essentially non-dimensionalized, uh, uh, it is a part of the temperature. And so, if you temperature, um, it is not non-dimensionalized actually, it is uh, 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 um, uh, essentially this perturbation, uh, this the product of the, it is essentially goes with the perturbation parameter epsilon, it is essentially can be considered as a non-dimensionalized temperature. So, if you increase the temperature slightly to this point, so the heat loss essentially exceeds the heat generation because this curve is above this curve, right. So, if the heat loss exceeds the heat generation, then the temperature drops and then this thing comes back again to this point. On the other hand, if you are like at this, if you go left, then heat generation increases heat loss. So, heat uh, this temperature essentially increases and it comes back to this point. So, either ways, if you go this way or if you go this way, you come back to this point. So, that is why it is a stable point, okay. On the other hand, if you see this one, then uh, then uh, if you go on this way, then your heat generation exceeds the heat loss. So, the temperature further increases and it continues to go on that direction. Here, if the if you go on this way, then the heat loss exceeds the heat generation and of course, the temperature will drop further and it will go back to this state. Okay. So, uh, this is an unstable point, this is a stable point and that is why um, uh, that is uh, at this point you always go to this point and if you s if you are at this point you go back to this point. So, this is the stable state and this is the unstable state. But what is the critical condition? What is the limiting condition for which you can have ignition in this case? The critical condition is given by the point where this generation curve is essentially tangent to the heat loss curve. So, and um, the the, the, the definition of tangency is given by these two things that is the, the tangency means that at this point your both your heat generation and heat loss must have same magnitudes okay, and at the same time the slopes must be same. So, that same magnitude means e theta e to the power of i theta i g is equal to h tilde theta i g okay, and then the slopes must be same. So, if you uh, differentiate this thing you get e to the power of i theta i j, but if you differentiate this scheme you think uh, you can get only h i j. So, if you substitute this, so it means that the magnitude is same, slope is same. Mm, so, if you substitute this thing that is if you substitute uh, mm, uh, e to the power of theta i j is equal to h i j here, you get theta i j is equal to 1. Okay, and uh, you get uh, similarly h tilde i g equal to epsi e. Okay, so this is the semen of criteria. That is a critical condition for which you can have ignition even in presence of heat loss. So where it means that the critical condition, your heat generation rate, okay, your heat generation rate is equal to your heat loss rate, and also the rate of heat generation rate and the rate of heat loss rate should also be same by this tangency conditions. So, this is the tangency condition and this is called the semen of criteria. Okay. So, uh, next uh, we will uh, consider using these uh, principles we will consider the um, uh, we will consider the the, uh, the extinction in a principle of well start reactor. So, here uh, what we do is that um, we do not do a transient analysis. So, using that uh, the previous concepts what we do is that we consider a flow uh, into a well stirred reactor okay and we considered the under what states we we consider that uh, uh, the those steady states which can lead to ignition or which can lead to extinction okay or whether this like a uh, whether that is a steadily burning state whether that is a non steadily uh, like a mixed state without any ignition and under what steady conditions we can get uh, that is uh, we can have ignition and extinction so this is a steady state analysis unlike the unsteady state analysis that we did previously okay so it's a steadily uh, stream uh, so it's a steady stream coming into through and so you can have a uh, vessel like this where you have an inlet okay and um, where you have an outlet okay mm, so this inlet comes in outlet goes in and say this uh, inlet has two has two inlets uh, through which one fuel comes in, one oxygen co comes in and they are immediately mixed here. Okay? So, the mixing is instantaneous. Uh, so, this is fuel and this is air. So, this mixing is instantaneous and this uh, and, and then this is also drained out through this. Uh, so, there is a continuous flow. Okay? So, what we uh, try to understand is that in this thing if you consider the state 
inside this uh, chamber which is at a particular so which is uh, which is always at a particular steady state okay that whether these steady states corresponds to a fully burning state whether this consider uh, to a fully uh, unburned state and wonder what limiting state this can transition to ignition under what state it can transition to extinction and so this is a steady state analysis unlike a uh, unsteady state analysis in the previous cases so this is a well stirred reactor uh, thing uh, so we have now uh, this uh, rate of uh, this mass volume flux coming in uh, or, or uh, this volume flow rate v dot times rho 0 cp because it is a flow operation and uh, we have the temperature increasing from t0 to tf tf is the flame temperature of the burn gas temperature okay and this is uh, of course this temperature so uh, this is uh, once again uh, this is uh, say the um, thing this is uh, this is the fuel this is the air immediately there is mixing somehow taking place okay uh, there is mixing taking place and this is the product going out okay so uh, this is uh, so this is the t0 temperature say though both are at t0 temperature coming in and this is the flame temperature uh, the, the final temperature that is going out so the temperature rise from here to here is occurring through this heat release rate which is given by this uh, vqc times v times b times cf times e to the minus t by tf okay so this is the steady state operation that inside this reactor and uh, once again we can use that previous analysis to say that you know t add uh, this is general uh, coupling function so it is like true it is we saw the same thing in the in the essentially the um, uh, the, the premix flame analysis also it is t add uh, tilde minus cf tilde and so we can just do the substitution for the same uh, logic and we can uh, we can find out this tf tilde minus tf0 is essentially a dumb column number dac times the difference of the adiabatic flame temperature minus tf okay and uh, of course you see this need not be this this tf need not be the adiabatic flame temperature because there is continuous uh, because the residence time is not uh, infinite so it may not reach the equilibrium uh, flame temperature in this amount of time uh, so what is the temperature reached this tf is maybe different for uh, this thing it's easy to understand that if this comes in at a very very high speed uh, fuel and air so even if they are mixed because of the small residence times it can go out of the reactor even if the uh, reaction takes place okay so uh, that is where that is this effect is captured through this uh, term called dumb column number which is essentially this b which is the characteristic collision time divided by v dot by v which is the um, essentially the this is the inverse of the characteristic collision time and this v dot by v is essentially the inverse of the characteristic flow time so the dumb column number this dsc the collision dumb column number what we get is essentially this characteristic flow time divided by the characteristic collision time uh, so this is the ratio that we get okay so um, uh, this is the uh, then uh, we it becomes you see that it becomes uh, uh, the analysis becomes similar to Semenov Semenov uh, criteria analysis so here we also have this uh, sharp e to the power of theta type of behavior going up but then it comes back because your cf is consumed now okay so <coughs> which we did not uh, consider in the previous uh, cases uh, right so um, Oh, there is a consumption of CF which we assume to be essentially constant because of CF was essentially equal to 1 for most part of the time. Uh, so, this is the difference um, and so in that case once again we can consider this, uh, this generation curve uh, to be given by this uh, right hand side that is uh, CF times uh, e to the power of what minus TA tilde divided by TF tilde and the loss curve which is given by DFC um, uh, inverse of term cooler number times TF uh, minus TA0. Okay, and uh, this balance of this we see that uh, uh, this is uh, this uh, e to the power of uh, theta term uh, theta curve similar to this, but then you now have a drop because uh, now CF is consumed, uh, which we did not have previously. Okay, so now this one uh, you see this uh, the loss is much bigger than this thing. Okay, so this uh, loss is much bigger than then that means that the uh, weekly it is uh, essentially a weakly reactive state and this is essentially happens at a dumb color number of at a small dumb color number. So, the small dumb color numbers essentially increase in this direction. Now, when you increase the dumb color number, okay, so uh, say let us uh, when you consider this state of 2, okay, uh, this state uh, intersects this at this temperature uh, this which you see that this state is corresponds to very high temperature. So, essentially this state corresponds to a very strongly burning state. And then uh, you can have this tangency uh, thing which is essentially the ignition state and you can have another tangency here which is the extinction state and then you can have this th thing which is uh, intersects here intersects here which is essentially
be once again similar to the unstable state because this will uh, lead to runaways. Mm, but all other states are stable states. This is also stable. This is tangency state. This is a critical. This is essentially the critical is these states uh, were previous to this uh, previous to the previous uh, to the Semenov's um, analysis. And each of this corresponds to the ignition and the extinction states. Now here you see that this in, uh, is uh, similar to the similar to the Semenov's analysis of the ignition state, but in Semenov's analysis you did not have the extinction state because there was no turning of this curve because of CF consumption, CF not equal to one. So in those analysis we consider CF tilde is equal to one, and here we do not have any restriction on the CF tilde. So uh, this three is a non is a, is a this is a non monotonicity and hysteresis state and it's not a stable state. So anyways, this is uh, the ignition and the um, the extinction states which we analyze and using this uh, mm, that is uh, that is this this point that is uh, can be identified using this uh, uh, DDT of f of uh, ln of dA collisional dump color number by dTF temperature equal to zero and then we can plot this in a more uh, familiar curve which is called the S curve. That is, we can plot it as a maximum temperature, reaction temperature, or burning rate versus the uh, on the on the y-axis and dump color number on the x-axis. So the dump color number once again is essentially the flow time scale divided by the collision or reaction time scale. Okay. So, uh, to, to summarize the previous analysis which you can understand, but this will give you a better picture, a clearer picture is that if you start from here, okay, this is the intensely burning branch and if you reduce the dump color number that is if you reduce your flow time scale with respect to the collision time scale, that is your flow time scale, your flow velocity time scale can be reduced by increasing the velocity okay, or by decreasing the residence time or by decreasing the, the length. Uh, but if you increase the velocity then this burn, intensely burning branch goes to this point which is an extinction state and from there it immediately goes down. This is uh, it does not follow this thing. Okay. So, this is one, uh, one uh, thing that is what happens when you from an intensely burning branch if you reduce your dump current number you go to a state of extinction. Okay. On the other hand if you have your very small dump current number to start with and which is essentially the frozen state because your say flow time is uh, large uh, is, is small with respect to your chemical times or collision times. Now you increase the dump current number by reducing your flow speed. Okay. So, what happens is that it in this temperature increases and suddenly at this point you have a ignition state and this point goes straight up here and then go to a branching state. So, these are the, the two points if you uh, have to annotate this it is like this. So, starting from here uh, you go here, you go here and from here you go straight to this thing. Okay. Uh, so, this is the, 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 this is the, this is the extinguishing extinction happening and from here you go to this, this part. Okay. That is the, mm, uh, this thing. On the other hand, if you go from, um, uh, if you go start from a small dump color number and to want to ignite something. So, you start from this state and you go here or go here and then you add this ignition point at this large dump color number you hit it and then you go to the uh, uh, main branch. So, this is the hysteresis okay. this, this the loop is uh, the hysteresis loop of ignition and extinction and the point to be noted here is that the ignition dump color number okay, is much larger than your extinction uh, dump color number. So, it is uh, so even a, a given state of a gas it might be burning, but that does not mean that you can uh, at that particular state if you start from fresh if you start from you can ignite uh, start from a fresh mixture and ignite the gas at that state because it can be that state which is even have a dump color number lower than this state. So, for ignition it is it is much more difficult to ignite a uh, 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 ignite a um, ignite a uh, ignite a fresh uh, mixture than uh, to uh, than to essentially extinguish it. Uh, your extinction happens at much uh, smaller dump color numbers where the ignition happens at much larger dump color numbers. And uh, then these other things also that can be like this that uh, that there can be a folded S curve that is this S shape may not may be lost and that is uh, when uh, that is a fact of the, the reason is that this critical ignition uh, this critical TF temperature has two roots that is why this this basically is the tangency conditions of dump color number with temperature. And and these two roots, but under the condition where you may not have root is that is if this becomes imaginary then you do not have roots and then it can become imaginary if you have two things that is if your uh, adiabatic flame temperature is uh, very uh, um, if you have if you have uh, basically very low activation energies reactions and if you have high initial temperatures that is your T0 is very large itself. So, if you start with a mixture which is very high temperature then you may not have this uh, uh, this uh, uh, fold this uh, stretched uh, this uh, folded S curve we have a stretched S curve 
uh, the, this happens in something like um, like um, uh, uh, your uh, mild combustion where your initial temperature is itself very high okay so you get the stretch rest curve and as a result of that there is no direct ignition or extinction behavior uh, so it's a it's a continuous uh, process of uh, combustion that is happening and um, that is that or if you have a low activation energy reactions then you do not have this sudden jump in uh, from the ignition to the extinction states so um, with that we'll uh, we'll close this um, class and uh, come back to analyze the extinction processes. So, we have uh, discussed the ignition processes so far. So, till then thank you very much.